Hey friends, it's Barbara Sue at Kowalski Mountain. Welcome back to our channel. So today I'm working on a little project to use up my loofah sponges. If you remember, I grew loofah gourds in the garden for the first time this year, and that plant grew amazing, and it produced more than 20 loofah sponges. Now that the season is over, I've cleaned the sponges and I need to figure out what to do with them because here on the homestead we don't need to grow things that we can't use and while it was a really fun project I want to use these and find ways to enjoy them. Now I've already used a bunch of them. I made soap using my loofah sponges And this is a goat milk soap, and I made it with a lavender uh, fragrance in it. And these are still curing, so we haven't used this yet. In about three more weeks, the soap will be fully cured and we can use it. Now, one thing I did learn in processing my sponges, you'll notice that I have two different colors here. So the lighter colored sponge, this has been bleached. And I soak it in a solution in bleach for maybe five to 10 minutes, not very long, because we don't want the bleach to destroy the sponges, we just want to clean it. Regardless if you bleach your sponges or not, you need to sanitize them. So this one, uh, this darker colored one, I did not bleach because I have friends and family members who don't like to use bleach. And so I wanted to give them a sponge that wasn't bleached, however, I don't like these not bleached. Um, I just don't like the color. I think it looks dirty. I wouldn't want to clean my dishes with something that looks dirty. And even though this can be sanitized, you wet this and you sanitize it by running it through the microwave for a few minutes, that will kill any type of bacteria in it. It just doesn't look very good. So these few that are dark, these are going to be bleached before I use them. And that's just my personal preference. Now for the rest of them, what am I gonna do with all these? Now I do have one in my shower. It was a small one and I use it to wash with and I left it in its natural shape. Now as you're using it, it gets really flat and then you have to kind of pull it apart and make it round again and let it dry. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm going to make sponges and I'm going to bring you along and show you how I did it. Now one of the other reasons I want to get this project done is these sponges, I'm keeping them in a garbage bag. They take up a lot of space like this. So right here, I've already done four sponges and I did a couple different sizes. This was a smaller gourd and it created a smaller sponge. This one's also a little bit softer than these larger ones that are a little bit more coarse. But here you can see I have four loofah gourds and they were whole sponges and I made four sponges. Now if I take those same sponges you can see the difference in my space needs. So I need to go ahead and get all of these sponges processed so that we don't have to have a big garbage bag full of sponges because I also don't want them to get dirty. So let me show you how I did it. Now the loofahs have natural uh, spaces inside. And we're gonna kind of work with that. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut down through that main corridor of the sponge. Now you can see that that's not gonna open it up very much. Now I'm gonna kinda look inside my sponge and I'm gonna follow the natural openings that are inside of it. And I'm gonna cut it to follow that. Now you can see I'm getting a little bit wider here. Now 
Now any seeds that are left inside, um, I do remove them at this point in the process. And these seeds, because I bleached it, they're not viable seeds for planting. Now you can see through that second run, I'm getting a little bit wider, but still not flat. So now right here, there is another opening through the sponge. So I'm going to cut through that one. And you do want to be careful not to cut through the bottom of the sponge and create a hole. So now you can see I've made three cuts and I'm getting flatter and flatter. So we're gonna do this one on the side over here. Now I've got some right here in the center that's kind of keeping me from opening up. So there we go. So now my sponge is pretty open. I've got a little right here. There we go. I'm going to cut this right here just a little. I've got my seed. I want to get that out of there. Okay. Now inside the sponge, we've got these really thick ridges. I'm going to trim those down just a little bit. I'm making a flatter, more usable piece of sponge. Now some soap makers, they don't put whole pieces of loofah inside their sponges. They actually take this and they grind it up and they just put particles of the loofah in their soaps, which I might try that in a future video. Now once I have a flat sponge, I'm going to fold it and I want to find the best fit. Now the first couple that I made, I folded it until my edges were even. And then I just cut off this extra. And you can do that. I just felt like it was a little bit wasteful of the sponge. So I preferred actually to just do it in half and then trim around. I felt that there was less waste doing it this way. Um, it's really a personal preference. It also depends on if you want your sponge to be square or not. Maybe this is a little bit too large. Now, I've kind of decided to just use the sponges in the shapes that they come in. So the large sponges, I'm going to make large scrubbing sponges. And those are really nice in the shower. Um, the smaller sponges, I'm going to use in the kitchen and use those for scrubbing dishes and such. So now I have a more usable shape for my sponge. Now, to make my sponges, I'm just using butcher's twine. Now this is what we use when we're processing our animals, when we process our meat. And I'm also using some tapestry needles. I think this is a size 16. So it has a large hole on it. 
that makes it easier. Now I did, I am doubling my thread. And this twine is still kind of large for this needle. So you need to carefully work it through to the halfway point. Now I'm just going to tie a simple knot on the end. And I went ahead and doubled it because it makes me feel good. And then I'm going to work that needle all the way to my center. So I have a nice double length of thread. Now hopefully this one's long enough. I like it to be long enough to go around the whole thing in one shot, but sometimes I don't get that well enough. All right, so we're ready to get started. We're going to put that needle, it's right here at my finger. It's about a quarter, maybe half inch in. And I've put my knot all the way to the center. I want that knot to be in the center of the sponge, not on the outside. And now I just sew it. Now I tried a couple of different sewing techniques and this, I think this is called a whip stitch. Um, I might be wrong on that. Put in the comments if you know what the stitch is called. Um, but I'm just going around the edge probably a little less than a quarter inch apart in my spacing and I'm tightening down around the edge. Now I have been using a loofah sponge in the shower for a little while and I have to say I'm really happy with how it makes my skin feel. I've been using those synthetic poofs for as long as I can remember and while they do scrub your skin really nicely I don't think they exfoliate it near as nicely as the loofah sponge does. Now I use it every time I go into the shower. Um, you don't have to do that as frequently if you don't want to exfoliate your skin as frequently. Now this twine does twist quite a bit. So if it gets to where it's twisting too much, I go ahead and take time and kind of get it to untwist. Now I've found in the few that I've made so far, I do like my edges to be a little bit rounder and not squared. That makes a nicer uh, edge when I'm sewing it. All right, so I'm to the end. And this one, I did cut the string a little bit short. But rather than make a knot, I have just been running this right through my stitching and kind of looping it underneath to secure the edges. A knot was very bulky and I didn't really like the way it looked and I also didn't probably going to like how it's going to feel on my skin. So I do have my little gripper that I use for quilting. When I can't get my needle out, I just use that, pull it through. And I just fully run that thread all the way through. And then once I've got it through, 
I'm going to use my scissors to trim that off. And there we are. Now we have a sponge, and this one is a nice size for using in the shower. It, it, you get a good grip on it, you can scrub really nicely, and I like these larger ones for that purpose. Now these smaller ones, I'm going to use in the kitchen. Now I wanted to show you, when you're cutting through the center of your loofah, you do want to be a little bit careful, because I got a little bit careless, and I cut a hole right through the sponge. Now I'm still going to use this sponge. Um, it's just going to be a lot smaller of a sponge. I'll just do it. I don't really know if I'll do it that way or I'll have to I'll have to be creative to make this one work. The other possibility is I can take another small loofah and piece them together and just use two loofahs to make a single sponge. So I'll play with that. But do be careful when you're cutting through not to cut through your sponge. Now loofahs can also be used in a variety of other things. I saw in my research you can use them for seed starting. This is completely organic. It's going to decompose. Now obviously if you're going to use it for seed starting you want to not bleach it. So I have a few that are not bleached. I could try to start a few tomatoes in it just to see how that goes. Um, and I would just cut this up into little portions and start my seeds right in that and then just plant the entire piece right into the garden. Now that the sponge has been made into a much more usable shape, we can use this for washing dishes or whatever we need to do. Put a little soap on there. The texture of the loofah is going to help remove any food that's more difficult to wash off. And then once we're done, we'll let this dry and it'll be ready for next time. Well friends, here's another cool project and a way to use my loofah sponges. And I'm pretty excited about some of the other products I have to show you. Now, this is our year. We're almost to our 1,000 subscribers. So if you have not subscribed to Kowalski Mountain yet, please hit that subscribe button and help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. As always, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.